G'day friends, welcome to Tag Tuesday. Now it's been a hot minute since I've been on YouTube, so my apologies for that. I thought I'd hit you up uh, with a special video when I return, so I'm just doing a little tutorial on line weight. Uh, I've got a Tombow brush pen here, it's dual ended, so I'm just testing out the different kind of line weights that I can get from that. And by line weight, I really just mean the thickness of the line, um, so that's really what I mean by that. And I've got my Pentel pocket brush pen here, uh, this is my favorite for doing this kind of a technique. Uh, I also love the Zebra disposable brush pens for when I'm doing smaller illustrations. But if I'm just doing like a big, uh, you know, non-detailed kind of illustration, I'll, I'll probably grab the pocket brush pen. Uh, none of this is sponsored by the way, so I'm just, I've only got a few of my favorites out here. And I will say for this, the Tombow brush pen isn't my favorite, but I'm just showing you here that if you use one line weight. If you if you use uh, one line weight through your whole illustration, it's not a bad thing at all, uh, but it, it gives you a very different effect when you do use a varied line weight. So this is just my little sample here. The one on the left is just me using, you know, one width of a brush stroke, and the one on the right is when I start to vary up that line weight. And you can just see how it becomes a little more dynamic and a little more bold. Um, so that's what I really want to explain today and uh, why I like that and why I use that for a lot of fashion illustration and how you can get that look yourself. Now also disclaimer, you don't have to have a brush pen to do this. You can add in that line weight with the pen you're already using. It's just easier with a brush pen. Well, it's easier once you've got the hang of a brush pen. I'll say that the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen is a little intimidating to start with, and even to this day, I mean, I've used this for about two years now, and I still don't have a mastery of it. It's kind of like painting, and I'm not great with the brush, but uh, this is the added convenience of having it, you know, in a pen form, so you can travel with it pretty easily, and it's, you've got a little more control than if you're using a, a brush and ink, and also there's no mess and no setup, so... Uh, that's great for me and my laziness. These are the uh, the tools that I've got today, just a pencil and some brush pens. Uh, I've got the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen, this is that one here. Uh, it is a little difficult to use, like I just said, um, and I've got this Mitsubishi colored pencil from Japan. The lead on this is incredible, it's just like red butter. So uh, I like to sketch in red, red's my favorite color. Uh, sometimes I sketch in blue or sometimes I sketch in orange as well. I rarely sketch in graphite anymore and that's just because the colored leads have a tendency to stay in place and not smudge. Uh, but you will find that whatever you're using, uh, if it's pretty waxy, you might get a resist. So uh, stay away from anything that's maybe wax based, get like an oil based pencil, is that a thing? I like the Polychromos or like this Mitsubishi one, if you can get your hands on that, it's an incredible pencil. Um, but yeah, so the pocket brush pen, brush pens in general, I start with the eyes because it is like putting on winged liner. I know I love eyelashes, you know I love really dramatic kind of uh, distant vacant looking eyes. So I start with the eyes because if I screw those up, I can always start again. You know, I've, I've only got the sketch down, I could just grab another tag, grab another piece of paper and start again. But if I've got the eyes and I'm feeling pretty confident with that, I'll just plow on through the rest of the drawing. Um, and yeah, I love the brush pen because of the varied line weight. Something that you'll notice about a lot of my drawings, not all of them, I still have a lot of drawings where I use just a single line weight, but uh, some of my drawings, most of them, most or some, I don't know. Just go through my Instagram feed, you can make up your own assumption. Uh, but I do like to do this often, and that's because it's just so dynamic. And when we're sketching, we have these like really loose, fun, kind of, uh, you know, working lines and, and lots of fun, sketchy, like this loose vibe to it. And I feel like when you start inking it in, you lose a lot of that. Uh, because we tend to be a lot more careful when we're putting the ink down on the page and lines become a lot more structured and suddenly you've lost that really whimsical, sketchy, loose feeling of the original drawing. So what I love about the brush pen is it still gives you that very loose, sketched out, um, you know, rough kind of feeling, but with ink. Um, and that's something that I find I can't really do with, you know, a, a pen. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'll just wait for your response. Um, no. But that's what I love about the brush pen, and also it's just really dynamic. I love these really bold lines, especially when I'm doing fashion illustration, um, because they're just so forgiving. Your eye kind of takes in 
everything as a whole before you start dissecting it. So you've got the freedom to play with these lines and you find that um, you don't want to start over a lot because it's fine if you kind of make a mistake. You'll see my brush pen kind of goes on its own little vacation here, right there. Um, so I was trying to draw, draw a nice swooping line for a beret, but uh, that's not what my pen wanted to do. But just going over it again and maybe thickening it up, thickening up, uh, thickening up the darker lines uh, just kind of saves it a little bit. And like I said, your your eye will take in the whole image at once before it starts to dissect where maybe it thinks you've gone wrong. Uh, so it's a lot more forgiving to keep this sketchy loose style. And I find that you can really only do that with a brush pen for me at the minute. I might find another way to do it, but this is just the most simple way that I can explain that to you. And please don't be turned off by how difficult you think the brush pen is. It actually works to your advantage because it will stop you from approaching that perfectionist area that I think a lot of people like to go to. So uh, work with it, just uh, realize that it's it's gonna be loose and some of those lines are gonna go on their own uh, you know, emotional journey throughout your picture, but it's a good thing because you wanna keep that, you wanna keep it loose, you wanna keep it sketchy, and, uh, and yeah, it'll all come together in the end, I promise. Uh, the other thing I love about using a, a colored pencil is that when I wanna go in and add shadows and stuff, uh, I can just do that with the pencil that I'm using. And a red's great because I usually like to add in lips and cheeks, so they're, they're kind of always rosy to me. So I, I just use the red. Anyway, so that's the first example. I'm gonna give you another example here and I'm gonna kind of speed through it and just talk a bit more about things that I like about brush pens and why I use them the way I do and uh, just some tips. Um, I think one of the first tips I wanna say is you can see that my hand kind of uh, preempts the line that I'm about to draw. And I like to get my whole arm involved in this process because uh, if you use the brush pen slowly, it has a tendency to lay down a lot of ink or become a little disjointed. Uh, you wanna kind of swoop those lines and keep them very, very, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, you want to keep them smooth. You want to have swooping lines and uh, I love the brush pen because it kind of does this um, Skip like this dry brush effect when you use it really quickly And I really really love how that looks you can see that on the shirt on the on the right And that's how I like to get my brushstroke mermaid effect as well But you'll notice see here. I've kind of gone a little slowly over that and uh, I didn't like how that line came out I simply went over it, but I'm just saying uh, get your whole body involved in this process Keep your lines really really curvy and really really loose and uh, and you'll you'll appreciate it a lot more Another great thing that uh, brush pens are great for is um, abstract florals, really bold, graphic, abstract florals. You'll see I'm gonna put a bouquet in this bride's hand in a second, a really, really large one. Uh, one that I don't think she'd physically be able to hold if this were real life, but it's a sketch and it's fashion illustration, so <laughs> none of the rules apply to me. Um, but yeah, I love to do these um, abstract florals with it because, you know, in nature, florals have all these varied lines and, you know, no two petals are the, pe petals. No two petals are the same. So I think using this brush stroke for anything that's kind of organic um, is, is a great idea. And especially vines and leaves, if you just press that brush onto the page, it kind of creates like a perfect leaf and teardrop kind of shape. So doing vines and stuff like that is so simple and quick. You just have to press press the brush down. Um, so I love this one because the ink is really, really black. I love doing uh, vines with it. I love doing fashion illustration with it. And sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll be adventurous and like I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna draw this face with it as well. One thing I do want you to note about line weight and being mindful of your line weight is that there is a weight to it. That's exactly why I think I've you know, it's been termed line weight. Uh, and so you want to be careful of the balance of your image. If you're just going over every line with thick, bold brushstroke lines, that's not a problem, but you're going to get a different effect to the one that I'm talking about. The one that I'm talking about here is, is varied. So wherever you've got really heavy, bold, thick lines, you want to put some really, really thin ones as well. So make sure the contrast is in uh, most of the image. So you see, I've got this really dark, you know, pupil and iris and I've got a really dark brush stroke for the eyeliner but those eyelashes are so wispy and thin that um, it creates a really nice contrast on the eyelid. The same with the nostrils being a bit darker so you know the, the other detail in the nose being a little bit thinner. I also like to keep a mindful I'm gonna lie here. I, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you like I really care about where the shadows go. I don't. 
but I'll keep in mind wherever the darkest parts of my image are, so say in the shadows of, you know, a cheekbone or, you know, in the shadows of a hairline, in, um, you know, eyebrows, that's probably where I'll put a lot of the heavier weight of the brush. Does that make sense? That's where I'll push harder. I should just explain how to get this line weight. You simply put pressure on the brush. If you keep the brush really, really light, you'll get really, really thin lines. Um, and if you push harder, the, the lines will come out thicker. If you go quicker, the lines will skip and give you that nice dry brush effect if that's something you're looking for. And if you go slower, you'll get a lot more ink down on the page and it'll be a lot more bold and a lot more um, heavy. Yeah, I think, I think it goes without saying, but I'm just going to put that in there in case uh, you haven't thought about it. So, um, I love doing eyelashes with this, by the way. Eyelashes with a brush pen is just, it's like a guilty pleasure for me. And eyeliner. But it is it just, just as hard to use as, a, as a, a, you know, a liquid eyeliner. So, any of you ladies out there that put on a, a fierce Amy Winehouse wing, you'll know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about this brush stroke. Because uh, it's kind of like drawing with a, a liquid eyeliner pen. Anyway, so here I'm going to show you an example where I'm just going to do all of it with, uh, what am I going to say? Just a single line weight. So I'm using the, the little bullet tip of that Tombow brush pen, and I'm going to do the whole illustration with that. Now, you can add in, if you don't have a brush pen, you can add in the line weight with whatever you're using. You just have to go over it a ton of times or maybe, uh, you know, plan out where you want to thicken up the lines and just color that area in. It's just, it takes a little longer and I feel like that's where you start to approach that perfectionist streak again. And that's kind of what we're trying to get away from here because this is the idea behind the, the idea, the idea behind this is that you keep it as loose as the sketch was. And it's it's a great way to keep that loose, whimsical, sketchy feeling in an ink drawing. So I just wanted to say, if you don't have a brush pen on hand, you still can create this look. It's just gonna take you a little bit more time and a little bit more work. And just keep, be mindful of not uh, over-correcting yourself in, in your drawings. Be, be mindful, if you're spending way too long on one line, you're gonna start to take away that, uh, that sketchy, loose feeling of your image. Uh, which is maybe what you want to do anyway. Maybe you just want to take this idea and put it on a really, really clean, bold graphic image. That's completely fine. I'd love to see what that looks like because I do not have the patience to do it myself. <laughs> so uh, tag me on Instagram if you're doing it. But yeah, so the winged liner, you can see I didn't start there um, this time with the image, but when I did put the brush pen back on it, that's where I started. Because like I said, I have a tendency to ruin the eyes and put way too much on. So I want to know if I need to ditch the sketch from the beginning and start again, or if I can save it. So here is the example where if you've already done it, if you've already got your, your image, if you've already got your illustration, you can go back in with the brush pen and you can go back in and put the line weight in. You absolutely don't have to start this way. This is something you can add to a drawing. So I encourage you to go and photocopy one of your favorite 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 illustrations and try it or uh, make a new one and try it from there and you know if you need to approach that safe zone and do your illustration uh, nice and neat first with your with your one line weight you know your 0 0.1 fine line uni pin whatever you need to use uh, do that but then go in and try and add in this line weight I just I think this is what people might be looking for when they want to change up the dynamics of their drawing. Because I see a lot of you guys have, you have the foundations, you have, you know, you have the basic principles of how to draw the face and where the eyes go, where the lips go, where the nose go. And, uh, and you've got these great sketches and then you get this, to this point where you're like, I don't want to do anything to it. This is a great way to take the next step and, uh, and see if this is something you like. This is not going to be something everyone likes. I'm telling you right now, especially when you start to see uh, how the brush pen can be a little difficult to work with. But, I mean, take a look at those illustrations I've already done. They're not neat. Oh, here's a disposable brush pen. This is the Zebra Sign Pen. If you got one of those Japan packs, there should be one of these in here. There should be. There is one of these in every one of the packs. There are these really, really fine brush pens. And this is what I like to use on smaller illustrations. So things that are going in my travel journal or, you know, a smaller kind of art art journal because you don't have the space to do a massive illustration but you still want to get that dynamic uh, line weight kind of feel um, this is what I'll do and this is also another pre-drawn image I just use that uh, carbon ink platinum fountain pen so it's a really fine sketchy line in ink and you can see it's all pretty much the same line weight they're all very very thin sketchy lines but I've gone back in and I've put the line weight in over the top the best thing about doing this as well and keeping it so loose and free is that if you are going to go over an image, it's so much more forgiving when your eye takes in 
the image as a whole. Do you know what I mean? Uh, those flowers on the top of the head, I thought, I want to put a flower crown on, not the little sprouts, uh, you know, exploding from a brain. I want this uh, massive Frida flower crown. So just going over that, your eye doesn't take in that there are those little flowers in between those florals. And I'm going to go over it with a colored pencil anyway, so you really won't catch it uh, when you're taking in this image. So I think it's a great way to experiment with uh, adding different things to images you've already done. I know you've all got something that you're super proud of, and that's what I want to encourage you to take a photocopy of and work on top of. Uh, there's nothing worse than sitting down and thinking, well, nothing good's going to come out of my hands today. But if something great came out of your hands last week, photocopy it and start with that you know start with the foundation that you're inspired by and that you're excited to use and I think that's when you're going to start to be uh, more adventurous and more excited to play with the different styles of it and adding different things going in a different direction that you haven't maybe really tried before you know this brush pen I didn't use a brush pen from when I started illustrating absolutely not um, I've used Copic markers have a brush brush tip and uh, that's kind of where I started getting the feeling for like oh if I sketched with the black one it's got this really interesting you know difference to it and then I started researching it and I, I heard that there was actually a name for it and uh, that a lot of people do it and that's what was making their images look so dynamic and this is when I was I'm talking about fashion design in particular um, where all of those lines just look so incredible and you know everything looked like it was done with this really dry brush and it just uh, I, I think you maybe know what I'm talking about but if you don't uh, just go Instagram searching for some fashion illustrations and just see how a lot of people will use line weight to add dynamics to their their drawings their illustrations uh, this is the Tombow brush pen I thought I'd never say this, but I actually don't like it um, <laughs> for a multitude of reasons. I think it's a great pen for practicing your lettering, um, but the ink comes out so well. Like, I know that's not really a problem for a lot of people, but for me, doing this technique, I love the dry brush look. So, uh, and especially on my brush stroke mermaids, it was, it, it, I miss it. I miss seeing all the lines skip in this one, but I persevered, so clap for me for perseverance. But uh, another great thing to do with your brush pen is add hair, um, because there are a lot of different um, shadows and highlights in hair, and I think the brush pen automatically adds those for you. Wherever there's a thin line, it kind of, you assume that there's a shadow, and wherever there's a thick line, you assume there's a, a th wherever there's a thin line, you think there's a highlight. Wherever there's a shadow, you think there's, um, it's, a, it's a darker line. I'm losing it. Um, but anyway, it's great for curly hair as well because they have, it's tons of highlights and shadows there. Anyway, I think I've rambled on enough about brush pens. Give it a go. Let me know how you feel about it. Um, try everything. Just try it all. Try all the techniques that you want to and, uh, and see what you love. And that's how your style is going to develop. So yeah. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.